Old English phonology is necessarily somewhat speculative since Old English is preserved only as a written language. Nevertheless, there is a very large corpus of the language, and the orthography apparently indicates phonological alternations quite faithfully, so it is not difficult to draw certain conclusions about the nature of Old English phonology. Old English had a distinction between short and long doubled consonants, at least between vowels as seen in sun, sun and sunu sun", stellen, to put", and stellen, to steal", and a distinction between short vowels and long vowels in stressed syllables. It had a larger number of vowel qualities in stressed syllables, i y u e o a, and in some dialects, o, than in unstressed ones, e u. It had diphthongs that no longer exist in modern English, which were, u, e o, ash, with both short and long versions. Sound inventory The inventory of surface sounds whether allophones or phonemes of Old English is as shown below. Allophones are enclosed in parentheses. Consonants Intervocalic voicing the fricatives f theta s had voiced allophones v z between vowels or voiced consonants. Steve letter Steve Steve Staffes letters STFs greater than STVs SME blacksmith SMI theta SMI theta SMEs blacksmiths SMI theta s greater than Smiths Hus house noun who s who s fusion house verb who sin greater than who zin for fourth for theta for theta compare your a earth e o R theta E greater than E O re fom fathom F ash theta M greater than fom Proto Germanic asterisk beta a fricative allophone of asterisk B developed into the O E fricative F or its allophone V except when geminated but P G asterisk developed into the O E stop D P G asterisk stabas street beta Z greater than O E Steve Steve P G asterisk habjana asterisk habda H B Jane H beta E greater than O E haban hafta H B B N have to have had up asterisk fader eth R greater than O E fighter fighter Topic dorsal consonants Old English had a fairly large set of dorsal postalveolar palatal velar and glottal consonants K T D J X C H Typically only, k, t, j, h, are analyzed as separate phonemes, d, is considered an allophone of, j, an allophone of, and, x, and, c, allophones of, h. Historically, t, developed from, k, s, k, by palatalization, and some cases of, j, developed from palatalization of, while others developed from Proto-Germanic asterisk J, although this palatalization occurred as a regular sound change, later vowel changes and borrowings meant that the occurrence of the palatal forms was no longer predictable, that is, the palatals and the velars had become separate phonemes, both the velars, K, G, including, and the palatals, T, J, including, D, are spelled as C, G in Old English manuscripts. In modern texts, the palatalized versions may be written with a dot above the letter. As just mentioned, it would otherwise not generally be possible to predict whether a palatal or velar is meant, although there are certain common patterns, for example, C often has the palatalized sound before the front vowels I, E, ash. Note that Old English had palatalized G in certain words that have hard G in modern English due to Old Norse influence, such as gifant give and geet gate. J was pronounced as J in most cases, but as the affricate D after N or when geminated fortition. The voiced velar stop was pronounced as a fricative after a vowel or liquid. At the end of a word was devoiced to an allophone of H, such as X, C below. Because of this, and the palatalization referred to above, the phonemes j and h alternate in the inflectional forms of some words: nagel, nail, nagel, dag, day, 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 degs, gen, sg, dages, dagus, nom, place, dees, greater than, dees, dagging, don, dun, greater than, do, burg, burr, castle, burr, greater than, burks, tilde, burr, burgum, dat, place, burum, greater than, burum, byrig, nom, place, byridge, sengen, to singe, sengen, greater than, senden, from asterisk sangion, brycy g, bridge, bry jj, greater 
greater than brid from asterisk brugjo c x are allophones of h occurring in coda position after front and back vowels respectively c n i h t boy nit greater than nict geot thought j theta o h t greater than j theta o x t the evidence for the allophone c after front vowels is indirect as it is not indicated in the orthography Nevertheless, the fact that there was historically a fronting of asterisk k to t, and of asterisk to j, after front vowels makes it very likely. Moreover, in late Middle English, h, sometimes became, f, e, g, tough, cough, but only after back vowels, never after front vowels. This is explained if we assume that the allophone x sometimes became, f, but the allophone c never did. Sonorants is an allophone of n, occurring before k, and words that have final in standard modern English have the cluster, in Old English sinkin, sink, sinkin, greater than sicken, houring, ring, rin, greater than r, i. The exact nature of Old English, r, is not known. It may have been an alveolar approximant, as in most modern English accents, an alveolar flap. Or an alveolar trill. R. The sequences hw, hl, hn, hour, were pronounced as voiceless sonorants, l, n, r. They developed from the clusters xw, xl, xn, xr, in Proto Germanic. Hat at what? Halaf l, f, bread, modern English loaf. Benutu n, u, t, u, nut. Houring r, i, ring, l, could have been a voiceless alveolar lateral fricative as it is the case in modern Icelandic. Velarization LR, apparently had velarized allophones, and R, or similar, when followed by another consonant or when geminated. This is suggested by the vowel shifts of breaking and retraction before, LR, which could be cases of assimilation to a following velar consonant, Asterisk Lernian greater than Leornian greater than Leornian Leo R Nyen Learn Asterisk Ere greater than Yore Eo R E Asterisk Phalen greater than Phelan F Ash N Fall due to phonotactic constraints on initial clusters, WR and WL are thought by some to be digraphs representing these velarized sounds, in which case the distinction was phonemic. Ridan, R I D N to grow. Ridan, re D N to ride. Litten, I T N, to look. Lighten, Li T N, to bend. However, this theory is inconsistent with orthoepic evidence from the Middle English era. Topic: <laughs> Vowels. Old English had a moderately large vowel system. In stressed syllables, both monophthongs and diphthongs had short and long versions, which were clearly distinguished in pronunciation. In unstressed syllables, vowels were reduced or elided, though not as much as in modern English. <laughs> monophthongs Old English had seven or eight vowel qualities, depending on dialect, and each could appear as either a long or short monophthong. An example of a pair of words distinguished by vowel length is god odd god and god od good. The front mid rounded vowels o o stroke occur in the Northumbrian dialect for instance but merged into ee -e in the best attested late West Saxon dialect. The long short vowel pair a ash developed into the Middle English vowels a with two different vowel qualities distinguished by height so they may have had different qualities in Old English as well the short open back vowel before nasals was probably rounded to This is suggested by the fact that the word for man, for example, is spelled as man or mon. In unstressed syllables, only three vowels, eu, were distinguished. Here, a, e, i, were reduced to e, o, were reduced to and u, remained. Unstressed, e, u, were sometimes pronounced as i, o, as in halig and heophon. Topic. Diphthongs All dialects of Old English had diphthongs. Like monophthongs, diphthongs appear to have had short and long versions. In modern texts, long diphthongs are marked with a macron on the first letter. 
The short versions behave like short monophthongs, and the long versions like long monophthongs. Most Old English diphthongs consist of a front vowel followed by a back offglide, according to some analyses they were in fact front vowels followed by a velarized consonant. The diphthongs tend to be height harmonic, meaning that both parts of the diphthong had the same vowel height high, mid or low. The Anglian dialects had the following diphthongs. The high diphthongs io and eo were not present in late West Saxon, having merged into eo and eo. Earlier West Saxon, however, had an additional pair of long and short diphthongs written i.e. distinguished as i.e. and i in modern editions, which developed from i mutation or umlaut of eo or ea, eo or ea. Scholars do not agree on how they were pronounced, they may have been i.e., i.e., or i.y., i.y. They were apparently monophthongized by Alfred the Great's time, to a vowel whose pronunciation is still uncertain, but is known as unstable i. This later went on to merge with y y, according to spellings such as Gelifan, for earlier Galifan and Gelifan to believe, according to another interpretation, however, the unstable i may simply have been, i, and the later, y, can be explained by the fact that late West Saxon was not a direct descendant of early West Saxon. See Old English dialects, this produced additional instances of, y, alongside those that developed from i mutation and from sporadic rounding of, i, in certain circumstances e.g. mysel much from earlier mysel, with rounding perhaps triggered by the rounded per meter. All instances of y were normally unrounded next to c, g, and h, hence given from earlier gifan to give. Topic: <inaudible> Origin of diphthongs. Old English diphthongs have several origins, either from Proto-Germanic or from Old English vowel shifts. Long diphthongs developed partly from the Proto-Germanic diphthongs asterisk u, asterisk eu, asterisk o and partly from the Old English vowel shifts, while the short diphthongs developed only from Old English vowel shifts. These are examples of diphthongs inherited from Proto-Germanic pg asterisk bion greater than Anglian bion, West Saxon bion b pg asterisk der greater than oe or animal greater than modern English deer pg asterisk dao greater than oe dia death there are three vowel shifts that resulted in diphthongs breaking palatal diphthongization and back mutation through breaking anglo frisian short asterisk i asterisk e asterisk a developed into the short diphthongs io eo ea before h with or a consonant cluster beginning with r l and anglo frisian long asterisk i asterisk a developed into the diphthongs eo and ea before h Palatal diphthongization changed e, a and a, a, u and o, e to the diphthongs i, e, a, a, e, o, a, a respectively after the palatalized consonants g, ski, and c, though this may have only been a spelling change. Back mutation changed i, e, and sometimes a to i, o, e, o, and a, a before a back vowel in the next syllable. Pg asterisk Lisnahana greater than Anglo Frisian asterisk Lernian greater than Anglian Leornian, West Saxon Leornian, learn, breaking, Pg asterisk na greater than af asterisk nea greater than old English nea near breaking Pg asterisk gebana greater than af asterisk jeven greater than gifan give palatal diphthongization Pg asterisk sebun greater than af asterisk sefan greater than oe safan seven back mutation scholars disagree on whether short diphthongs are phonologically possible and some say that old English short diphthongs must actually have been centralized vowels Hogg argues against this, saying that a length contrast in diphthongs exists in modern languages, such as Scots, in which the short diphthong in tide, tid, contrasts with the long diphthong in tide, tade. Peter Shriver has theorized that Old English breaking developed from language contact with Celtic. He says that two Celtic languages were spoken in Britain, Highland British Celtic, which was phonologically influenced by British Latin and developed into Welsh, Cornish, and Breton, and Lowland British Celtic, which was brought to Ireland at the time of the Roman conquest of Britain and became Old Irish. Lowland British Celtic had velarization like Old and Modern Irish, which gives preceding vowels a back offglide, and this feature was loaned by language contact into Old English, resulting in backing diphthongs. Phonotactics Phonotactics is the study of the sequences of phonemes that occur in languages and the sound structures that they form. 
In this study it is usual to represent consonants in general with the letter C and vowels with the letter V, so that a syllable such as B is described as having CV structure. The IPA symbol used to show a division between syllables is the dot. Old English stressed syllables were structured as C 3 volts C 3. Topic onset. Onset clusters can be analyzed as having three slots. The first can be occupied by fricatives s, f, theta. The second by stops p, t, k, b, d and the third by the sonorants per meter, n, r, l, with. The other onset consonants, j, t, h, n, r, l, and r, if these are accepted as existing, always occur alone. Alternatively, the voiceless sonorants n, r, l, can be analyzed as clusters of h, and a voiced sonorant, h, n, our, h, l, h, w. Nucleus. <inaudible> <inaudible> The syllable nucleus was always a vowel. Topic Coda. Topic Sound changes. Like Frisian, Old English underwent palatalization of the velar consonants k and fronting of the open vowel to a ash in certain cases. It also underwent vowel shifts that were not shared with Frisian, smoothing, diphthong height harmonization, and breaking. Diphthong height harmonization and breaking resulted in the unique Old English diphthongs IO, IE, EO, EA. Palatalization yielded some modern English word pairs in which one word has a velar and the other has a palatal or postalveolar. Some of these were inherited from Old English drink and drench, day and dawn, while others have an unpalatalized form loaned from Old Norse skirt and shirt. Topic dialects Old English had four major dialect groups, Kentish, West Saxon, Mercian, and Northumbrian. Kentish and West Saxon were the dialects spoken south of a line approximately following the course of the River Thames, Kentish in the easternmost portion of that area and West Saxon everywhere else. Mercian was spoken in the middle part of the country, separated from the southern dialects by the Thames and from Northumbrian by the River Humber. Mercian and Northumbrian are often grouped together as Anglian. The biggest differences occurred between West Saxon and the other groups. The differences occurred mostly in the front vowels, and particularly the diphthongs, however, Northumbrian was distinguished from the rest by much less palatalization. Forms in modern English with hard, k, and where a palatalized sound would be expected from Old English are due either to Northumbrian influence or to direct borrowing from Scandinavian. Note that, in fact, the lack of palatalization in Northumbrian was probably due to heavy Scandinavian influence. The early history of Kentish was similar to Anglian, but sometime around the 9th century all of the front vowels a, e, y long and short merged into e long and short. The further discussion concerns the differences between Anglian and West Saxon, with the understanding that Kentish, other than where noted, can be derived from Anglian by front vowel merger. The primary differences were, original post-Anglo-Frisian brightening A was raised to E in Anglian but remained in West Saxon. This occurred before other changes such as breaking, and did not affect A caused by I umlaut of A. Hence, e.g., Dalen to divide deal sleep. The West Saxon vowels i e, i, caused by i umlaut of long and short aia, eo, io did not appear in Anglian. Instead, i umlaut of aia and rare eo is spelled e, and i umlaut of io remains as io. Breaking of short, a, to aia did not happen in Anglian before, l, plus consonant, instead, the vowel was retracted to When mutated by i umlaut, it appears again as a versus West Saxon i e. Hence, Anglian called cold versus West Saxon sealed. Merger of EO and IO long and short occurred early in West Saxon, but much later in Anglian. Many instances of diphthongs in Anglian, including the majority of cases caused by breaking, were turned back into monophthongs again by the process of Anglian smoothing, which occurred before C, H, G, alone or preceded by R or L. This accounts for some of the most noticeable differences between standard i.e. West Saxon Old English and Modern English spelling. 
e.g. Ega I became Ega in Anglian, Nia near became Anglian Ne, later raised to Ni in the transition to Middle English by raising of E before H, hence Ni in Modern English, Niest nearest become Anglian Nest, shortened to Nest in Late Old English by vowel shortening before three consonants hence Next in Modern English. Modern English derives mostly from the Anglian dialect rather than the standard West Saxon dialect of Old English. However, since London sits on the Thames near the boundary of the Anglian, West Saxon, and Kentish dialects, some West Saxon and Kentish forms have entered modern English. For example, Barry has its spelling derived from West Saxon and its pronunciation from Kentish see below. <laughs> <laughs> Examples The prologue to Beowulf The Lord's Prayer equals equals notes <laughs>